are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And guess what? Jeff Zilgit coming through with us, uh, coming through with us with some news right at the end of the show. Contavious Caldwell Pope leaving the Denver Nuggets and heading to the Orlando Magic. Is that a fake Jeff Zilgit? No, it isn't. Okay, good. Our friend Jeff Silgit of USA Today reporting Contavious Caldwell Pope is leaving the Denver Nuggets and headed to the Orlando Magic on a three-year deal, I am told. Um, this would suggest the Magic are not talking to Paul George or have done talk, talk to Paul George, but Contavious Caldwell Pope, excellent three-point shooter, uh, excellent defender. Like we've kind of said, he is a uh, Gary Harris plus. Like he's a bigger Gary Harris. He is a better shooter than Gary Harris. He's a better defender than Gary Harris. He is someone that um, he is someone that uh, will enhance this team. What what they were doing last year, he will make that better. Um, we don't have the details of the contract yet. A three-year deal, I would suspect if it's a three-year deal, it is not for that 25, sorry, it is not for that $25 million um, that we talked, uh, 25 million or that two-year 50 that we were talking about. My bet is that this is a little bit more reasonable, maybe on the $18 million range, maybe 19, maybe three for 60. Um, I would bet that there are non that there's a non guarantee on that third year that that third year is an option option deal. But uh, this is kind of the move we all expected. Very baseline move. Very much a um, very much a, a guy that enhances what the Magic did last year. Gives them a better version of what they had last year without changing too much. Um, I'm a big believer in the horse grant theory. Uh, having a guy who's been on championship teams that has been on very good teams in the past imparts wisdom to those young teams. Um, I think that's really, really valuable for, for young teams, especially. Uh, so I am not at all shocked that this is what the magic ultimately did. I'm not shocked that this is where the magic start. I think that I, I think that this is again, a, a relatively safe move on the magic's part. Um, but, uh, I, but I think this does make the team better. I think this does make the team appreciably better. Uh, someone asking KCP backup or starter next year. Not that one. Sorry. Um, this one, uh, KCP is going to start, you know, you don't sign a guy to a $20 million contract or whatever the case may be. I, if I were predicting, I don't have the numbers yet. If I were predicting it would be three for 60, um, or three for 61, 62, give him a little extra money somewhere. But, um, my bet, my bet is that is, is that he's coming in around $20 million again, just good trade ballast too in the future. But I would bet there's a team option or non-guarantee on that third year. If I, if I were guessing, um, and, He's going to start like, like he, he would, he's going to, he started for the nuggets. He is an excellent defender, excellent, really good three point shooter. Maybe not the greatest, not like a standout spot up shooter, you know, spot up shooting is about the same as Gary Harris. He is a better version of Gary Harris. He will stay healthy. Uh, he's been on championship teams. He, he's a much more aggressive and physical defender. Um, so it's, so on that front, he is a better option than, uh, he is a better option than Gary Harris. So the Magic do get better here with Contavious Caldwell Pope. I, I 100% believe this. Um, the question now is what comes next? Um, and here's the number, actually. Uh, we actually get the number now. Three years, 60... Sorry, uh, let's add that to stage. Uh, we actually get the number now. Three years, $66 million deal. So that's $22 million straight. Um, starting shooting guard, uh, Shams Trani with the number here. Three years, $66 million. Uh Again, rel I, I think this is a fair price. Like I said, I didn't think they were going to get the two for 50. Um, I think that this is a, a good spot. This point, this does make Jalen Suggs a starting point guard, as many of you are predicting. Um, whether this means the Magic are done, whether this means the Magic will do more, uh, is certainly a fair question. Um, you know, Again, a lot of people asking here, what do you think this means for the Magic's plans for the rest of free agency? Do we turn to Hartenstein? So here's what, let's do some math. Magic paying $22 million for Contavious Colo Pope. If they have about $50 million in cap room, that means they have $38 million left. That would be enough to go after Isaiah Hartenstein. So if that is the plan, they can still offer that two for 50 or three for again, another three for 66. Why not? Um, they can still offer that deal for Isaiah Hartenstein. So my, again, my big thing, my, my thought when the magic were supposedly chasing um, Paul George was that I don't think that the magic should throw their money at one guy. They need multiple players. They need multiple high-end players. Um, so I didn't think they should throw their money at one guy at, like Paul George. Um, but I think that 
I think that now, you know, you can go after multiple players. So maybe Hartenstein's still a play. Again, like I've kind of mentioned, I, I'm i looking for some wing help too. I think Gary Trent Jr. would be a play. So you have 38, that's roughly, let's estimate, $38 million in cap room left. You could go spend 25 of that on uh, Isaiah Hartenstein if you want. And then you've got 13 left to spend on someone else. So there is still a lot to get to here. Now, I think that this is a fair criticism. Blake Bickerstaff saying he only made 1.63 points pointers per game last year. I don't get this. Um, and this was my concern too. So Contavious Caldwell Pope, essentially, and I did a podcast on this last week. Um, you know, there, I did a podcast on this last week. In fact, let's uh, let's play that game. Oh, I can't. Okay. Uh, we're not going to play that game today. Um, uh, I did a podcast on that last week. I'm actually going to pull it up for you here. Uh, you can go here. Uh, let's find it. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Uh, sorry, I'm 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 promoting myself here. Uh, where are you? Case for Contavious Caldwell Pope. I know you're right here somewhere. I don't know where you went. Uh, I know I did it. There's the case for against Paul George. Whatever. It, it, it's it's somewhere. It's, it's somewhere in my archive. Sorry. Um, I don't mean to waste time here. Uh, but um, yes, he only made a 1.63 pointers per game last year. Um, and my concern with that is that he, the Nuggets, so the Magic were 29th in the league in three-point attempts per game last year. The Nuggets were 30th. <laughs> um, that's the, that, that was my biggest issue with Contavious Caldwell Pope. His stats, they won't directly translate to the Magic because they have Nikola Jokic. Um, one of my concerns is that KCP wouldn't give the Magic the shot volume that, they're, that, they're, that they probably need from the position. And, and, what, and again, what I think they need is the shot volume. So I share some of your skepticism, but at the very least, KCP is a better version of Gary Harris. Um, Gary Harris was fine. You know, I, I am a notable Gary Harris defender. I am a notable, let's try this actually. Uh, I am a notable Gary Harris defender. Um, I think that, sorry. Uh, I think that Gary Harris got a bad rap from fans. He's kind of the, the, the scapegoat in a lot of ways. Um, he did what was asked of him. Um, and I would always argue that you need to get him more shots because if he's getting the ball, that usually means the Magic are moving the ball well. KCP has the same issue. And, and, and that would always be my concern with bringing in a guy like KCP and bringing in a player like Contavious Caldwell Pope. Um, and third year player option for, for Caldwell Pope per Shams. Let's add him to the stage there. Third year player option for Caldwell Pope per Shams. So, very honestly, very player friendly deal at that point. Um, but I, KCP, like, look, at the end of the day, the goal is to get better. Um, you know, did the Magic get significantly better here? No, I would I would agree with that. Uh, I don't think that they got like a hundred percent better with this move. Did they get better today though? Did they get better adding Contavious Caldwell Pope? Absolutely, they did. Absolutely, they got better with Contavious Caldwell Pope. He is a better version of Gary Harris. He's going to make he fits defensively. He fits their needs offensively. They absolutely got better today with this. Uh, so the Magic do only have twenty eight million. Sorry, I, I I didn't math well. They have twenty eight million dollars of cap room. They're out on Paul George, Clay Thompson. They're probably out, they're probably been eliminated from that a while ago anyway. Um, so, you know, the Magic did their thing. You know, they they did their thing. Uh, Clifford Raphael asking what about Lonnie Walker? I would like him as an end of bench guy as well. I think that's that's a good option. I think he fits what the Magic want to do. Um, but again, that's an end of summer guy. You know, we'll we'll get to we'll get to that as well. Okay, taking minutes away from AB Jet. Um, I don't think so. Um, you know, honestly, so the Saturday flight says. Uh, is he taking minutes away from uh, AB and Jet? Uh, to me, that answer is no. Um, to me, that answer is uh, to me that answer is no because AB is playing Markel Fultz's minutes. Jet Howard is essentially going to be playing Caleb Houston's minutes. You hope, or, or kind of sliding in there. Uh, KCP is playing Gary Harris's minutes, um, and you'll probably get a little bit more. So yes, yeah, they will take a little bit, a little bit of time from them, but. Um, KCP, KCP is, is gonna, he's gonna help. Like the team, the team got better. Like, you know, is it the giant step forward? No. Um, but the team got better today for sure. I, I, I absolutely, absolutely believe that. And, you know, again, he's been in the playoffs. He's been a champion. He's a two-time NBA champion, 2020 with the Lakers, 2023 with the Nuggets. He absolutely makes this team better. So I, I do really, I, I like this signing. Um, again, it's not the, it's not the like runaway home run signing. This is like, you know, we're, we're, we're getting on base, you know, get singles and doubles here. Um, he does make this team better. 
they're going to look very similar to what they looked like last year, though. Um, that's 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 where the magic are. And again, they have twenty eight million dollars of cap room left to spend. Um, that's that's going to be that's going to be a boost for this team. So I like what the Magic did here. Um, I, I like that. I like I like the signing uh, overall. We'll we'll dive more into the signing tomorrow. Um, so we'll dive more into the signing on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. Uh, I, I I have a Tristan De Silva interview in my back pocket as well. But yes, I am. You could kind of tell I'm I'm running out of steam a little bit here. It's been two hours of of live broadcasting. Um, Andrew Knabel, 100% means Suggs at point. I absolutely agree with this. Um, you know, again, this is kind of the big question. The Magic are not addressing that point guard role in a meaningful way. Um, one of my drawbacks on Contavious Caldwell Pope is certainly that he is not a playmaker. Um, he's a good decision maker. Like he will make good decisions. He's not going to hurt you on that front, but he's not a playmaker. He is going to be a spot up shooter. He's actually a pretty good pull up shooter too. Um, uh, but he is he is going to make this team better significantly. So the Magic clearly believe Jalen Suggs can develop his point guard skills to the level that they need him to, uh, and and that I think is ultimately a good thing for for the Orlando Magic. So uh, we did get a signing in. We did get that that in before we shut down. Um, and I'm glad that we did uh, as well. Uh, so, you know, we're, we've got two hours here um, for for us. Um, I will take last questions here in, in a minute, uh, in a minute. But um, I want to thank everyone who joined us here for this live. Hey, look, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm responding to comments. Um, uh, KCP signing does not mean there's room left for Paul George. Magic have now, you know, three years, $66 million, assuming it's flat. That's $22 million. Magic had about $50 million of cap room. Magic only have $28 million left. Paul George is looking for 50. So Magic are off the board for Paul George. Um, Gary Harris is still not under contract. Gary Harris is a free agent, so they're not worried about that. AL Jr. saying your thumbnail is ominous now. I think we all kind of saw that that was the direction the team was going. I tried to I tried to be predictive. And when all the Paul George stuff came out yesterday, I was like, I need to change my thumbnail to Paul George to be a little more enticing. But now we know that what the Magic are doing. Now we know who the Magic have signed. So we'll dive a lot more into Contavious Caldwell Pope, what he brings to the Orlando Magic on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Magic uh, as well. I want to make sure I, I hit questions here and, and catch my breath a little bit. Um, essentially, like, uh, kind of people are talking about this. Um, this is this is kind of the Magic standing pat. Um, you know, Orlando Adams, this has been a criticism of the Orlando Magic and Jeff Weltman. If we're okay with standing pat, then we should have just re-signed our guys to cheaper contracts and keep the great team chemistry. That is true, but here's the other problem, Orlando. Um, teams are required to spend 90% of the cap um, this year. Uh, and if you don't spend 90% of the cap by opening day, um, if, if you don't if you don't put don't spend 90% of the cap by the, by the beginning of the regular season, then um, you don't get the luxury tax payments. So you don't so all the luxury tax payments are split between the non-tax paying teams. Um, so you don't get the luxury tax payments. And you get a cap hold for the difference to get you to 90%. Uh, so they had to spend money. Like they needed to spend. And Gary Harris, like again, at the end of the day, did the Magic get better today? Like this is the question. Did the Magic do the biggest thing? No. But did the Magic get better today? I don't. I, I may have my question about Contavious Caldwell Pope for the big picture. But yes, the Magic got better today. The Magic 100% got better today. And if that's the biggest takeaway that you can make from all this, I have questions. I have all of that. The Magic got better today. Contavious Caldwell-Pope is a better version of Gary Harris at minimum. Uh, he is he is an excellent defender, a much more physical and bigger defender than Gary Harris. He is as good, if not better, of a shooter than Gary Harris. He's been on championship teams before. You know, this this is this is a good signing for Orlando. This is a good player. Um, this is this is a th the, the magic got better today. At the end of the day, that's that's the question you got to ask. And I think they did. Now, there weren't a lot of opportunities in free agency. I've been joking with people all day that if the magic sign, if the magic didn't get Paul George, whoever didn't get Paul George between the Sixers and the Magic, the loser was gonna get Gintavious Caldwell Pope. That's the drop off. And so, yeah, if you expected the Magic at Paul George, today's disappointing because Contavious Caldwell Pope is not Paul George. But the Magic did get better today. The question now is what comes next? So I assume the Magic are, you know, they've taken care of Contavious Caldwell Pope. Hopefully they're on the next flight to Eugene, Oregon to meet with Isaiah Hartenstein. 
Um, that would be the next big move. The Magic have about $28 million of cap room left to spend. Will The question is, will they spend it on one big player like Isaiah Hartenstein, or will they spend it on several players? Will they look to add some depth, they bolster their bench a little bit? Um, that's that's the next question for the Orlando Magic. That's the next question that this team faces. Um, he's going to help. I, I, I want to... I want to I, I want to make that clear. Like he is going to make this team better. Um, and again, is he going to dramatically make this team better? Probably not. <laughs> you know, you know they're, they're, he doesn't solve the big problems on this team. But the Magic still won forty seven games last year. Like, I, like yes, there are issues the team needs to resolve, and KCP helps a little bit with the shooting issue. Um, not the volume issue, but the shooting issue. But he does make this team better. I I want that to be abundantly clear. So we'll see what the Magic end up doing next. We'll see uh, where the Magic go from here. Um, There's there's definitely a lot to go. And look, he's he's a healthier. He's healthier too. I think that's that's the part I forgot to mention. Thank you, Shannon Thomas, for mentioning that. He is healthier than Harris. He does all the things Harris does, but does it better. So if you're looking to straight upgrade of a position, the Magic won 47 games last year. It's it's not like they were a failure last season. Ultimately, the end goal is Paolo Bancaro has to be better. Like, if Paolo Bancaro gets better, Franz Wagner get, re- rebounds with his shooting, Jalen Suggs continues his improvement, that's going to be, that's going to help the Magic get a lot better, too. And so, yes, you know, is this the most exciting signing in the world? No, but KCP makes this team better. And, and it's going to be really exciting. You know, I'll be really excited to see him play this year. And, and I think that he will help this team out a ton, a, a ton for, uh, you know, I think he will help this team out a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't solve the big issues. So I, I get that. Um, I get that. It doesn't solve the big issues, the point guard, the playmaking, the, the setting things up. He helps with shooting. I think he has gravity as a shooter. Um, but you know, it, it, it he helps, he helps, doesn't solve big issues, but he does help and does help this team improve. Um, so, you know, there is still obviously a lot more work to do for the Orlando Magic. They are not done, but this is this is the big signing for um, this is the this is the big signing for the Orlando Magic, uh, or this is the first signing for the Orlando Magic at least for for this team. And so, a lot to to break down here over the next um, next thing. And, and as several people are mentioning, like KCP was was on all defensive team ballots. Let me see if I can pull those up here. NBA. All defensive team voting. Let me see if I could pull that up. Uh, here we go. Um, let's see here. Voting all defensive team. All defensive team. Here we go. So Ke- Ke- this is this is another really important point. Then, uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope received eleven all defensive second team votes. I want to repeat that. Like like honestly, like let's. Let me let me throw this up here. Let me throw this up here so y'all can see it on 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 the stream. Contavious Caldwell Pope received eleven all defensive team votes. You can see him right here, right there. So again, like I know the Magic have a lot of defense, and you know some people are mentioning names like. Magic can still go get Tyus Jones if they want Daniel Caps. If you want Tyus Jones, they can still sign him. He just won't be a he just won't be a starter. Um, is a Simon's deal still still an option? It's still an option. He doesn't have a place to start anymore. But yes, yes, it's still an option. Um, they have they could go get Isaiah Hartenstein if they want. Um, but Katavius Caldwell Pope checks a lot of boxes for the Magic. Excellent defender, good three point shooter, good size for first position, selfless player. You know, you know what he's going to give you. Um, he's a better version of Gary Harris. Like at, at, at minimum, that's what the magic cap is a better version of Gary Harris. And, and so I, I, again, is that worth $22 million a year in this environment? Probably is, um, you know, magic down to about $30 million in cap room now. Um, but you know, magic, their starting lineup set starting lineup looks pretty good. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. And, and obviously they still have a lot of work to do. Um, yeah, so we got our big, we got our big signing, we got our big news. If you made it to the end of the show, if you're listening on, uh, if you're listening on replay, I appreciate that. Thanks for getting to two hours and fifteen minutes. I am very much running out of steam, um, so I'm going to wrap up shop here. Um, we will have 
A lot more on the Magic signing Contavious Caldwell Pope. Be sure to follow my socials at Philip R underscore OMD at Omagic Daily for the latest free agent goings ons here uh, with the Orlando Magic. They're they're definitely not done. They've still got money to spend. They're still going to spend it. So. Uh, we will get to all that. You can, of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip R underscore OMD. If you haven't done so already and enjoyed the show, check out Locked On Magic. You can subscribe wherever you download podcasts, as well as check out the YouTube page, which you're watching right now if you're listening to me uh, live as well. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. I'll break down some thoughts on Gintavious Caldwell Pope here in a bit, in a bit too. Um, you can check that out at, at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Follow us there, of course, at O Magic Daily. And for even more Orlando Magic content, including my final player grades, um, you can check out the Orlando Magic Hub, patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. As always, be sure to check out the Lockdown Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel as well for the latest on sports around the world from local experts who know their team best. <sighs> okay, uh, that is all I have for, the, for, for today. You can tell I am running out of steam. Talking for two hours and 15 minutes is a lot for me. Um, but the Orlando Magic got better today. I think that, uh, honestly, that's a big takeaway. There are still big questions to ask, big questions to, to see. A lot of it still comes from internal development, but the Orlando Magic did some good work today, uh, or it appears they did some good work today, uh, and we'll see how they move forward from here. But that is it for me. I am tapping out. Um, I wanted to get all the way to 7. I'm here at 7.45. Uh, so I appreciate everyone who joined us for this live free agency Palooza show. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Match. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about Kevin T- Contavious Caldwell Pope and what the signing means. I'll have an episode with Locked On Buffs dis- discussing Tristan De Silva later on in the week as well. Um, it's my birthday week. It's a holiday week as well. So we'll have uh, we'll be taking some time as well. I may be back here and. I may be back with a bonus episode later today as well to talk more about Contavious Caldwell Pope instead of saving that for tomorrow, but we'll see how I feel. Um, Thanks again, everyone, for joining the live stream. Thanks again for everyone who made it to the end. If you're listening on replay for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. See you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic. Spare no expenses, people. Peace out.